Hello guys, I am Alim Karim and today I am going to present a session as fast as possible on ASP.NET MVC with the database first approach with Entity Framework 6.1. So prerequisites for this session, C Sharp, Object Oriented Programming, Relational Databases and so on. So the links will be given in the uh, video if you don't know any of those, so you could check out. And uh, we will make four videos uh, for a few topics. So first one is basics, uh, database first approach, beyond the basics, then uh, SP.NET identity concepts, which uh, concludes the role management or user management system, and then go beyond the basics where uh, the regular developer or in a regular YouTube video, you don't find those topics. So we will cover those in the last session. So. We will start with a simple MVC project. So here I am uh, in my Visual Studio. I just created an MVC project with an identity of individual users. That's it. Since we're using a database first approach, so we need a database. So let me create a database from my SQL Management Studio. So I'm here in my SQL uh, Server Management Studio, and I'm connect to, connecting to SQL Express. So we are, here I have my existing databases, but I will create a new one for this purpose so that you know, understand that what's going on inside the database rather than going through a previous one. So owner. So it will create a database and then I will design my databases through this diagram. I always follow this convention when you have a table the primary key name should be table name and ID let's say a person uh, can be an employee so this one uh, should be go as a primary foreign key relationship and yes I pull it on so I have my primary foreign key relationship student will be inherited from person let's say sometime a student can be uh, employee as well because sometime a student can be a teaching assistant and that way he or she will be an uh, employee so if that's the case then a uh, student let's say student will have some great information let's say CGPA be let's afloat so if a student is a type of employee then it should be really like uh, optional because a student and uh, student will not be always as an employee so what we can make is a n2m join And we'll keep a property so we're done now let me import that database to my project so first I'm going to get the database from my computer okay so I'm here in my data folder so let me detach my database let me just stop the SQL server Okay, so SQL Server is stop. Let me try again. Okay, so let me just go to the Visual Studio. Include that database. And then 
inside the model I'm going to create another folder called entity model okay let me just give a name database first approach choose EF designer from database choose select my database and give uh, entity name as a in the config okay inside that I'm going to choose all the tables so here I have my database generated model so if I now click here you'll see that all the entities has been uh, derived from that model which is great by the way but uh, there is a downside and the downside is let's say I add an annotation MVC is about uh, that if you write in one place it should be fan out in every place and work it in every uh, view and everything so let's say I add a display name property now let's say I create a controller so if I just go there you'll see that in the properties there is a container name so this is used as your uh, context name so if I run the project so if I go to people I get a nice index if I create new if I give a person ID it shouldn't scaffold maybe there is some problem in their um, t4 template so let me just write the first name as a first name and last name as last name so if you see here you will see the name that I have given inside my model for date let's say I gave a date like this so it's added now if I go to my database you'll see that the person is created still we're not happy now we need something more so let me create the other controllers for the project very quick now that we have scaffold every table from our database in controllers now we can just execute and see what it does in real world or in the project so now if I go to let's say student students you could create a student based on the person is given let's say 3.4 let's say 3.4 uh, let's say create uh, another person let's say it was people right say so, lies Roman Robert 111 okay so okay so it's not really generating because I made a mistake in the database and the mistake was uh, I did I forgot to make it auto incremented so that's why the ID is keep showing so that was my mistake so you can fix it by going to the database opening the database now if you just write identity 11 it will be fine and you have to update it Okay, so my database is updated, so I have to do it for all the others. So 
So we have updated our every of our tables. Now I have to update my model. So what I do is if I have a small changes like the property changes, I could really just go and click the update database and click on OK and finish and it will update everything. However, if the update is complicated, let's say you have added and changed some few relations with previous tables, then sometimes the entity generators fail to generate or sync with the database. So that time what you should do is delay every of the table or every of the schema and then again run the update model from database. Select every table, click OK and you are fine but there is a downside the downside is every time you make a change in the model it replaces or regenerates every of the classes or entities so remember that I have added a display name property here so first name it was gone and it's not because that I have updated from the database. Let me just do a small change by dragging any schema. If I update it and save it, you will see a message pops up, which really saying that, uh, which will uh, reload the person because it's really updated again. So you can see that property is gone. So that's the downside of uh, database first approach but we're going to solve that problem in our next video so to see all the columns uh, all the uh, controllers in life uh, let me generate those very quick so let me just delete those and create new ones So if I click on create, I'll see that the person ID is gone now. So let's say Elias 2, Roman, and the date is again 1-1. One, one. We don't care about the dates now. Uh, and let's say edit again, and let's say uh, David, David Roman. Let's say we have two persons. And let's say we create an employee against those persons. We select a uh, person and then we sign a designation. So we have to really create as a designation first. So let's say admin by 50,000 US. Something like that. So Let's go to our employees and create select manager. Manager is not admin, is not a teaching assistant. Save it for now. So let me create another one. Let's say David is our let's say admin. So in real world, you have to really use jQuery to make all those. Uh, make smooth because the user is not going to select the admin they're going to choose the designation and from the designation you're going to auto select the is admin property something like that so that's up for another video we're not careful for now or we don't care care for it now so let me create some students Okay, we made another mistake in the table design. So the design should be like one student, one person can be as one student, but we have N2M join. So let me just fix those very quick. So we're going to attach a database, and this time we're going to select the project uh, directory. So we have select our project directory, we have got the database, and when you're Attaching it, you should select the owner from SA because this will solve the problem of your uh, uh, 
diagram designing because if you don't choose the essay you cannot modify the diagram again okay so here you can see the join is n to m so we need to make it one to one so go to the relationships and uh, okay so go to the index and then add a key and that key should be that your person ID and that should be unique that's it now you'll see that there is a one-to-one -one join okay so now we're done and yeah one person uh, one designation can have multiple employees that's fine so if you now close it just mm. run it we will be fail to do that so the idea is you again go to the management studio and then take the database offline and then use detach so you have seen that I have failed to uh, log on to the database at the first entry so if that happens the solution is touch the database again and then uh, give a name attach as and then again go to the task and detach it and then if you try to log in you will be successful okay so to solve that problem that we have just seen I have did it on purpose so that I can show you a solution the solution is to not to get connected with the SQL Express so what you should do is get connected with Visual Studio server name so which is the local name that's given this one so if you use this one you'll see that I'm connected and in here you'll find that any of those will be your database so that's it for this basics video so you see some problems we're going to solve that problem in our beyond the basics session so you guys can find us fb.com slash developers organism and I'm a little cream you could mail us if you have any query